Just looking through some old photos, this one's the River Coal um, in Stetchford, nearby where I used to live. But before I start that, I'll just quickly whiz through the materials. Got my pallet here, they're all Cutman watercolour tubes, squeezed out and allowed to dry on the pallet. We've got Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, Glycerine Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. The brush I use is the large one, Ranson Hake. Got my water jar here. 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. Got a tea towel up there, drying. I used to wipe the excess water off. So another quick look at the photo before I get started. So I'm going to start off as usual, just give the paper a good soaking all over. This will uh, stretch it evenly, you'll get all that crinkly, horrible thing that happens when you're doing watercolours. And so Sky, uh, we'll see in a bit of a lizard and crimson. As you like, all over. Just going to be down straight to the bottom. Clean the brush. And I'm going to go a bit of ultramarine, a bit of Payne's Grey. And brush a little bit of that in. To liven the sky up a bit. A bit more. Just dipping the tips of the brush in, see how the airs have come apart. Plus, it's gone a little bit dry. So, just to loosen it all up. You see, although the paint's dry on the palette, it doesn't take long. Just a quick swish with the brush, and it soon loosens up. And you're off away. Running again. Um, Extracted a lot of it in there just for the other bit. See that red, that red coming out? Oh, yeah. Don't want too much red though because it's soon. It's very strong colour. Very, very strong. Um, now, distant trees. I haven't cleaned the brush because I want all those sky colours on it. But I'm going to go into a bit of, bit of lemon yellow. And let's put in the. Uh, I'll dry it first, no I won't, I won't dry it, let's put them in, just flicking it up, let's just bear it as it comes along, a bit more colour in there, a bit of light red, and they're getting, they're slightly further away, so it's getting like bigger and bigger as it comes towards us, I want that a bit lighter, let's put a few clouds in, lighten that sky a little bit so the profile of this tree stand out a bit better. A few more clouds up there. What's the difference? Can I uh, put it on there? Can you see how you can see it much clearer now? Let's give him, oh, let's bring that down a bit. A bit of burnt on back. Just looking for that subtle difference. So that's the, uh, yeah, let's just put a bit of burnt umber and put some like, like muddy banks. Just muddy banks and it's sort of going off into the distance towards the left there. So I'm going to clean the brush. I'm going to pull this tight because it stretches a little bit. That's all it needs. It doesn't have to be bow dry, but as long as it is drier, so the paint comes off a bit stronger as we come forward a bit more. So it's a bit more on this left now. We've got a, there's a tree a bit closer. So I've cleaned the brush, dried it off on the tea towel, and then what I want is something, I'm going to have to do it pretty dark I think, so it stands out against, against that bit there, and that tree just sort of comes right up, just get a bit of variation, a bit of brown, a bit of red, otherwise it'll just look all the same colour. 
just make it look a bit bland. And then as it comes down, got a bit more rain onto these sort of muddy banks as the river's coming round. Bit of blue in there as well. See how it darkens it with the blue, it takes it to almost black. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to re wet it afterwards and then put the reflections in. What I can do now is just use the finger now just to it's a bit wet so it's not coming off very well. and branches in the tree. But because it's so wet I'd have to wipe that to dry a little bit first. Now over on the other side actually I didn't need to clean the brush thing so I'm going to put some uh, the tree on the left hand side now. And I want it quite dark the branches so I'm going burnt umber Ultramarine. And I'm going to start somewhere like it, somewhere like that. And it's, it's branches going off all over the place. Somewhere up there, like that. You can use the rigger to do that if you if, do this if you want. I just uh, find it a lot easier with the high brush, a lot quicker as well. And then once I've got the bag leaves in, I'm going to clean the brush, sort of dry it on the towel, and then I just need to put the leaves in, but I'm not going to paint each individual leaf. I'm just going to get the hair so they're going all over the place, and then go into those leafy colours, basically your greens, lemon yellow, ultramarine, pains grey, and I'm going to start at the top. I'm just very slightly as I'm coming around. It needs to be pretty dry now so that you don't block it all in. You want to be able to see what's behind the tree. See through the gaps, through the gaps in the leaves. And to do that, the brush has got to be pretty dry. Otherwise you're just going to block it all in. It's gone into a bit of red, just to, just to only just to subtly try and change it so it's not just all green. I'm just going to bring that down there, that's all I'm going to do now for that. And then in front of that we've got, I'm just going to clean the brush. We've got some uh, grasses, but I'm going to still these a bit lighter. So I'm just going to go raw sienna, lemon yellow, and then just A bit of light red as well, just to warm it up. Burnt on that light red, a bit of brown, just to get some sort of muddy bank. And before I do anything else now, I think I'll put the reflections of these trees in there. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. Make sure it's dry. First, make sure that that's dry. If it's not, you'll have to dry it or wipe. Just wipe it to dry. Use a hair dryer, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to re-wet all this. And then go back to try and create the same colours we used. Some of those twigs and branches that are in the tree. 
through there. And what I'm going to do is give that a quick. Just loosen that a little bit, and then I can always even put a few, a few little rocks in there. Not too bad. Just a hint of a few reflections in there. strengthen that bank a bit more. So we just take the excess off on the towel and then get back into our burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine. And just strengthening those banks. So you want to just wipe it with your finger just to soften it off a little bit. Some of this just sticking out of the water. And we got a bit more. Mud on this side as well. Okay, burnt umber. Ultramarine. rocks here and there. over what you don't like. And then switch to the rigger and I'm just going to pop a little bird up in the sky. Let's have a closer look at it. So if we just do a quick uh, comparison against the photograph. So I've not copied it slavishly, I've just used it as a, a general guide as for the composition. Starting off with the sky, always try and get a sort of light bit and a dark bit to keep it interesting. And you can see some of the branches of the trees contrasted nicely against the lighter areas in the sky. Our trees and brushes receding into the distance, getting smaller and smaller. Just using the card edge to put a few rocks and stones, just to break up the land mass really, make it more interesting. And then using, you could use a rigger if you like, but I prefer to use the hake. Just to put the main limbs, trunks, twigs and branches of the tree in, and then using a dry brush to finish off with the leaves. The other side, I didn't use a brush, I just used my finger this time, just to scrape them in with a fingernail. I did a bit of light red in there. It's not in the photograph, but just, just a variation on the colour. You can see where I took this clay out with the tissue, just to help the profile of the trees stand out better, otherwise they would have got lost in amongst the dark cloud. Again, more card work here, scraping in the rocks, just breaking up the landmass again. 
Um, also helps, almost sort of looks as if the sort of lights sort of catch in the rocks with a light side there and then a darker side there in the shadow. All these twigs then reflected in the water below, remembering to put the branches in. They don't have to be in exactly the same position, but they're all thereabouts. It'll just give the impression of reflection from above. A few more rocks, fingernail scrapings, just create an impression of little reeds and grasses by the banks. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.